Our first guests are Chapman University professors Frank Frisch and Fred Caparoso. They are conducting a three-year study on bone density right here in Orange County. You know, thanks for coming, you guys. Welcome. Thanks for having us. Thank this you. is an interesting study. Why don't you tell us uh, what osteoporosis is and why you think this kind of study is important for us? Well, Heidi, Larry, thank you for, thanks for having us. Um, the study that uh, my colleague, Dr. Caparoso, and I are engaged in is a study to look at the bone health of Orange County residents. Bone health is an incredibly important facet yeah. to a person's general health. And the Irvine Health Foundation has funded a study for us to characterize the nature of the bone health across a wide variety of ages, genders, ethnicities. And so that's what we're doing and we're uh, hoping to entice more of your viewers to participate in our study. How many people do you think are you going to enroll? We want to uh, complete 400 subjects. Not everybody realizes that. I mean, I think a lot of people think osteoporosis is a woman's disease, but it's not really. It's just as much men, and you're going to enroll, enroll as many men as women in this? or Yes, that's our game plan. I mean, it's always historically we've thought of it as, as a, a women's disease and uh, postmenopausal women at great risk. But we want to yeah. picture, it looks like now there's enough data out there to say that different ethnicities are at different risk levels. And we don't know. We have a whole generation of young women and young men who aren't consuming the same things that we did as kids. Um, less milk, less calcium, which we know is important in the process. So we want to take a look, a snapshot at what's happening so that we can make recommendations for what they should do for their health. Why don't you briefly you know, describe what is the process of osteoporosis? How, how does that develop? In if either of you, if you would. Let me start by saying that osteoporosis is a degeneration of bone. And bone is a really a very active tissue. We, the general public thinks of bone as sort of a, like the framework to your house, but it's not. It's a real living tissue and it has a blood supply and a nerve supply and it's a, it's a, the turnover of the bone tissue is, is profound. So when there are some cells that break bone tissue down greater than the amount of bone tissue built by other cells, then we call this osteoporosis. To put it another way, the bone degradation, when bone degradation exceeds bone buildup, we lose bone mass. And we call this syndrome osteoporosis. Do certain bones lose it more than others, like in your lower spine versus your long bones? Or Osteoporosis is generally seen in all bone tissue, but it's clinically observed in the spine and in the wrist and the leg, but really any tissue is subject to this degeneration. Is there a reason why women have been targeted as having had more incidence of osteoporosis than men? Well, probably because they are smaller in stature in general, mm -hmm. and also uh, probably were more likely less active physically when they were younger, oh. when bone buildup would happen and help them. And so that's probably the biggest factor. Uh, that and diet of the elderly in general is poor. And um, those things compounded uh, give that result. So uh, women have been rightfully so targeted as people who we have to really be concerned about. But now we're looking at the whole population. Mm -hmm. And there's concern because of uh, relationships of calcium and vitamin D. Um, we're finding out that people are have vitamin D deficiencies we didn't think they would have before. Um, and this has made the news recently. We found that out with some of our early patients that uh, uh, vitamin D is, is an important player in this, in this process. And so we just want to find out what's going on because we're going to be doing blood work, we're going to be doing bone scans, uh, we're going to be doing nutritional analysis, and then they're going to see a clinician putting that all together for the for the subject so they can take matters into their own hands. When you do the bone scan, why don't you describe how the bone scan is done, what exactly? We, uh, we do something known as a dual x-ray absorptiometry. It's a, it's a machine that gives you a very low dose of two energy frequencies. And what happens is that we get a picture of the bone tissue. And we get a picture of how hard it is, how, how much radiation ab is absorbed and we get a reflection of how much mineral is in the bone tissue. We know that with osteoporosis, there's less bone tissue. In a young, healthy bone, it's very uh, hard and mm -hmm. uh, has a different picture. Um, this, as Fred said, coupled with the nutritional status 
and the blood biomarkers that give us some insight into what's happening physiologically, mm -hmm. we can then say the 17-year-old is not the same as the 20-year-old, is not the same as the 40-year-old. Uh, the Vietnamese uh, patient may not be the same as the Mediterranean patient. So we're hoping to get a really wide array of pictures of bone health in Orange County. Now, weight training has been mentioned as a great strengthener of bones. Is this true? Absolutely. I think that, uh, not that I want everybody to take the route of our governor um, <laughs> uh, as a former weightlifter, but, but resistance training or even walking, any kind of impact or resistance training will build bone density, and that's a, it's a really good thing to do. It's, um, it's good for a lot of different reasons, but certainly in bone health, it's something to consider. I think that we're seeing that prescribed more and more. I think that the average person knows this now. I, 10 years ago, I would say, no, that's not true. So that's exciting that we are making some inroads into people's health, but um, I think we, we just need a better picture, um, especially early on. I'm, I'm really concerned about uh, teenage, teenagers and, and um, their eating habits and where that's leading them uh, 20, 30 years down the road. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're headed. So with this um, test, uh, w what part of the bones, so the, the spine or the forearm the or the spine? And for men and women, the same area. Uh, yes, and the reason why is it's, it's, it's the clinical gold standard by which we can measure patients across the world. There's a World Health Organization standard for the bone densities of the spine. Ah, and so that's different from the femur than when you go to get your usual bone density test? Uh, or? In some labs, they, they prefer the femur, but, the, but uh, it may also be in conjunction with the spine. The spine and the wrist are, are other sites that can be used, but the spine tends to be the gold standard for, the, for most clinicians across our country and the world. And the, uh, the exam takes, if they come for this evaluation, how long does the whole evaluation take? Great question. I think you, I don't know, Frank, what, do you, what well, would you say? I would say um, that because our study is so complex, we want people to complete a health survey first. Okay. We give them a nutritional, uh, uh, ask them to complete a nutritional survey that Dr. Caparasso and his students complete uh, and give back to the patient. Then we uh, schedule them for a DEXA, this x-ray of the spine. Mm -hmm. The actual x-ray of the spine takes 15 minutes. Okay. It can be scheduled in, out, parking's easy, 15 minutes. Well, the, uh, the good part of it is if you had to pay this with health costs the way they are today, it would be a lot of money. This is going to be done free for our subjects okay. and, and certainly they're going to find out personally about their bone health, but they're going to be serving really the greater community and looking at are there issues with ethnicity? Are there issues with age yeah. or gender? And that's really, um, it's exciting stuff and it's happening here in Orange County, which we're proud of. Yeah, that's a great service. And uh, it's a, and it is a big healthcare cost. Uh, I mean, uh, heart disease is number one, cancers are probably number two. This is probably somewhere up it's there. It's right up there. In the, in yeah, the bone, bone related health yeah. is probably the third highest expense in the U.S. health system is bone related because you, you have uh, issues of falls with the elderly and usually those falls result in problems. I, I had uh, a grandfather who actually fell out of a tree and uh, it was, yes, at 97. Fig it was tree. in great shape. <laughs> 97. But, yes. Probably but, a fig tree, though. But after that fall, he was just never the same. He went into a, a downspin, yeah. um, an onset of dementia, and, and, and didn't survive. Yeah. So, um, and we know a lot of cases of this. I, I was involved with patients uh, who stepped off a curb in Chicago, yeah. broke an ankle. Um, uh, Larry, I'm sure you've got a lot more patients than I do, so it, it really is important, but I'd say it's probably the third leading cause of health-related expense in the U.S. So this is great. So in Orange County, we have this uh, free study conducted by you guys, comprehensive. We can get them, we can get some real answers and possibly prevent fractures and cut down future co health care costs. I think the beauty of this study is that um, it, it, while it's limited in scope, to get this picture of bone health, it may lead to other studies that target specifically nutritional strategies, exercise strategies, so that right now, while there's currently one size fits all, yeah. take a bisphosphonate, exercise, 
take vitamin D for everybody at r almost the same dosages. Yeah. So if we can narrow that prescription strategy better, yeah. we can better serve mm -hmm. the public. That's yeah. fantastic. Well, we're out of time, and thanks for coming. That was a, a very thanks interesting discussion. Us.